Hello and welcome back to the Very Real Estate Effect podcast, a show dedicated to real estate investing right here in Quebec. I'm thrilled today to have Mr. Ricardo Cañas as our guest. We're going to go dive in into his uh, real estate investor story. But before we do that, I'd just like to remind you, if you like the, the show and would like to continue supporting us, please leave us a comment, share with a friend who could benefit. It always helps. So thank you very much in advance. All right, Mr. Ricardo Cañas, welcome to the show. Thank you, Axel. Uh, how are you? I'm well. Uh, Thank I'm, you. I'm excited that you're here because we've actually met a couple of uh, weeks ago. We had a fabulous dinner, a very long conversation, and uh, I really wanted to share your story with others because I'm sure they could benefit from it. They could learn something, and um, if it, these did not last, uh, be inspired. So before we before we go into your invest your real estate investor story, like uh, where tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, my name is uh, Ricardo. Uh, I live in the South Shore. I'm an entrepreneur and real estate investor. I'm uh, married. I actually married my high school sweetheart and I have uh, two beautiful boys. All right. Yeah, two boys, a ha handful of two boys. So you, you had, when we had dinner, you kind of had shared, like, I, I recall that you had started, uh, you're, you're um, a welder by, by training and you kind of slowly went up uh, went up the ranks and then as you said then you went into full entrepreneurship and i was hoping you could share a little bit about this before before we start on the real estate uh no problem uh yeah a couple of years back i uh, w was a welder by trade and uh, the company i was working at um how it happened was i was reading the blueprints and there happened to be a mistake on the blueprint uh, I went in the front office, uh, not so much to argue, but, uh, you know, just to help the engineers fix the mistake. Uh, then after that, they pretty much were surprised. Well, oh, wow. Uh, you know, you, 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 you noticed the mistake, so they fixed them. And I don't know how it happened, but, uh, you know, HR and the managers got involved and they said, hey, let's, you know, this guy has potential. Why don't we try hiring him uh, in the office or maybe he could do something else? And that's, that's how it happened. I actually got promoted. And during that time, that was uh, the 90 day probation period. So I wasn't even technically fully employed. Wow. So that was, that was amazing for me. And that's when I realized like the potential I could have. Yeah. So that was one of the initial sparks for mm -hmm. me. Okay. Well, wow. and you took a chance. I mean, it takes quite a bit of courage to go back in there and be like, Hey, I just want to point out, are you sure about this? Because uh, we both know it could be wrongly interpreted, but you took uh, you took the risk. All right. So and so from there, um, after that, you said that you went into entrepreneurship. Like, so what what does that mean in your case? Well, for my case, basically running a company. I actually am currently the vice president of Andre Saint Mirko. It's actually my father's law's uh, company, and. Before I started, uh, the company at that time was grossing around uh, three to four hundred thousand a year, and uh, now that I'm on board, since I've been on board, we actually hit a million dollars in gross sales. Wow! Uh, yeah, and you know, uh, before I started, I saw an opportunity there. You know, the company wasn't where it is today, uh, and it was just my father-in-law. So I said, you know what? This guy has a pretty much a monopoly. Uh, and then I brought on another brand because tech, what we do is we repair uh, restaurant equipment, but we only do two brands. The majority of what we do are rational ovens mm -hmm. and these ovens are everywhere. Okay. And uh, it's funny because my father-in-law tells me I'm too ambitious, but that's just the way uh, I am. And uh, that's how I'm growing the company. Uh, because, you know, I, my goal is I want to do all of Quebec service for all of Quebec. So we'll see where that goes. You know what? Too ambitious. I would be very proud to have you as a partner. If I was your, your father-in-law, having someone that's too ambitious is a good thing. Yeah. That's what I tell them. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. 
Okay, so then you started to, uh, how did you get into real estate then? Uh, actually, the first, well, one of my first deals was uh, with my father and sister. So he really intrigued me back in 2017. That's when I really started. You know, uh, I even used to watch uh, income properties with Scott McGilvery. And, um, you know, he said, oh, why don't we just start buying a uh, property? So, you know, I was always scared. Uh, so I said, oh, you know, let, let me take a chance. Mm -hmm. So we took a chance. And uh, it's actually funny because I signed this promise to purchase um, the day my son was born in the hospital. Wow. Uh, you know, I think an hour before he was born, uh, my father was assigned. I went in the room and then, you know, okay, sign everything, e-signature. E -E so uh, so that's how it started. But the, the thing that, that started is because I just looked at other people that were much older uh, and I didn't want to be like them. Not that there's anything wrong, but, you know, I grew up with the conventional wisdom of, you know, you go to school, uh, you have to go to college, you have to go to university or else if not, you're probably labeled as a failure. And then from there, you have to get a job, stay at that job until you're 65 and then you could retire and then in enjoy life. Yeah. I said, I, I didn't, I didn't want that. I didn't want to go that, that route. And one of the things I wanted, which I knew the most successful people have, were assets. Uh, and a lot of people around us have a lot of liabilities. So, you know, and, and, and that too, you know, I read uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm -hmm. And again, that sparked something inside of me as well. And I said, you know what, I want to start doing what these people are doing. And one of the things that these people have as assets is real estate. Absolutely. So that's what sparked your, your desire to, to go and to, to buy some real estate. Yes. Okay. And so you said you started in 2017. I'd love to uh, understand a little bit more about, you know, your, your, your progress and what kind of properties and so on. So just to kind of like fast forward, kind of what does your portfolio look like now? And then we'll kind of go back and, and analyze it. Okay, no problem. So we're looking at the five properties and there's currently one that's uh, that we just put in an offer. Okay. Uh, so from 2017 and then I start, that's when I started purchasing again was 2020. So what did I do in those three years, those three years, that's when I had my, my two boys, uh, that's, you know, plus growing the business as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you know, I was very busy at, and at the same time, I find that was my growth stage, those three years, uh, growing, learning, listening to podcasts, reading a lot of books, uh, speaking to other people. Uh, and then 2021, uh, hired a mentor, which I believe uh, we, we both know, uh, Dino. Yeah. And uh, he helped me a lot with, uh, with mindset. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, I, I don't regret uh, doing that, you know, because a lot of people would think, oh, you, you know, you spent thousands of dollars for a, uh, for a mentor, you know, but it's the value that you get out of it. And not only the value that you get out of it, it's what, what you can do with that value. Because at the end of the day, my the business that I'm running plus real estate, it's a people business. So, so that. sorry, just to go back. So you talked about Dino. Dino's actually been a guest on this podcast. It's yes. been, he's, he's an, a fantastic guy as, as a person and really good and successful investor. And I could understand why you would have been attracted to him and trying to, um, to, to learn uh, so from him and to work on the mindset and so on. So if anyone wants to actually go back a couple of episodes, it, it was about maybe three months ago. I forget the exact number, but I highly encourage you um, to, to go back to it. So you, so then you, you said you, you took a pause between roughly 2017 and 2020, you had the boys, you grew the business and so on. And so kind of what happened in, in 2020? Well, in 2020, I actually injured myself. I, uh, I had, uh, well, that's kind of my fault. Uh, everyone should just be careful when you, when you're training, especially lifting heavy weights. I injured my back, had uh, two herniated discs. And from there, I just got so scared and I'm happy and blessed that, you know, it, it, I didn't injure myself uh, that badly, but, mm -hmm. um, I just got scared and I said, listen, I, I need to go full throttle with things, you know, no, no guts, no glory, uh, now. And, and imagine the pandemic has just started. Yeah. So, uh, again, no, no, no guts, no glory. And I said, let's, let's just go. I started doing more research. That's when I started networking 
initially with other investors. Uh, and you know, that's how I started with the next deal and then the next deal and the next deal. And like you said, on one of your previous episodes, when you want to work with a partner, it's very important that you, you, you date. And that's what I started doing, you know, uh, lunches, speaking on the phone a lot, uh, you know, um, and, and that's how it started. Okay. And so in 2020, you went, you started to do more deals. So I'd love to go a little bit about in, into the, I was going to say into the weeds and into the detail. And so could we maybe pick like one or two deals that you've done and like, I'll kind of ask you a bunch of questions and we'll, we'll go right through it. Uh, no problem. Okay. So we'll do uh, one of the last deals I've done, which is actually one of my first uh, joint venture deals okay. uh, that I've done. So this is a single family home, mm -hmm. which is the, pretty much the majority of my portfolio. Um, so it's, it was what, single it's family. located where? Uh, this one's in Drummondville. In Drummondville. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and this is uh, acquired for 180000 Okay. Um, Can you kind of give, give us the house? Uh, two bed, two bed, three bedrooms, two bathrooms? Uh, three bedroom, two bathrooms. Okay. Uh, bungalow. Mm-hmm. Um, acquired for 180,000, uh, ARV 250,000. Mm, so good. after the, yeah. So after the refinance, it's uh, pretty much acquiring a $58,000 of, uh, capital okay. back. Okay. Yeah. So you, you purchased it back in 2020. Did you right away do a lot of re renovations and was it rented at the, the time or was it vacant? This one was actually 2021. So this one, this one was, uh, this one was vacant. Okay. Okay, so that's all, always a lot easier. And so right after you, you closed, you were able to do a few renovations or did you just keep it as is? Uh, majority of as is, it's more a lot, uh, just makeup, you know, paint, fix a couple of things here and there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so with, with this one, so I, I guess fairly quickly after you closed, you tried to do all these, uh, all these changes and increase the value. Uh, mm -hmm. you, did you rent it right away? What was your your prof the profile of tenant you were looking for profile of tenant uh again speaking with other investors uh i i wanted the the family to to move in you know the family with uh with the dog and everything i just find that it was more of a quality tenant that mm -hmm. that would stay long term mm -hmm. um and again i mean that's there's there's no right way or wrong way because i know some people they start off with plexes and uh i just starting off with, with houses and moving forward, I would, I'm definitely going into plexus next. Um, but that's, that's the tenant profile that I, that I want the family and uh, the, you know, the kids uh, and everything because they're, they're more of long-term tenant yeah. and just, you know, taking a, a little pause, which is in relation to this, uh, what I've learned from my mentor too, who's happens to be the rent to own King here in Quebec um you know i i learned a different option what i could do with these houses you know instead of just re renting it to a regular tenant i could do a rent to own uh or perhaps an airbnb so there's there's different solutions uh that, that i learned because i you know i already have a tenant asking me uh, i would like to purchase the house off of you yeah. so you know if i haven't learned that from dino i wouldn't know what what to do right now yeah so that's and it, it, it only stresses the importance of when you get into a property like that, listing all your possible exit strategies, because so many people at the beginning just think, oh, well, I'm just going to buy mm -hmm. it and then I'm going to resell it. Well, okay, but you could keep it forever. You could resell it in five years. You could do some short-term rental. You could do rent to own. You could try to yeah. only rent to a big employer that's in the, in the region who's just going to take it for like, you know, three to six months and stuff like that. So there's so many different ways to yeah. skin the cat in real estate. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's good. So, so you said this deal was in uh, in 2020. Kind of where are you at right now? 2021. Actually. 2021. My bad. Um, yeah. Where are you at right now in the whole process? Uh, is it rented? Are you refinancing, or where are you at? Uh, cur cur currently uh, rented right now. Okay. And like I like I mentioned before, there's actually another one uh, that uh, I put in an offer, mm -hmm. um, uh, which is in Drummondville as well. And uh, just a qu quickly, a, a, a reason why Drummondville is because I've doing, been doing service for about six, seven years right now. 
uh, I've been hitting the towns in that area. And what I find is the town before there, St. Saint Saint Saints, if you saw it six, seven years ago, it isn't what it is now. And the next town to be next to be, you know, that they're going to start building a lot of uh, condos. It's going to develop a lot more than what it is now mm -hmm. is uh, Drummondville. Yeah. And that's, 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 that's the trend. That's what starts to happen. So I want to get in there before, you know, all this starts to happen. Absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. Those second and third tier cities um, got huge growth after, mm -hmm. during, during COVID. And I think mm -hmm. that trend is, is there to stay. And it's usually cities that over time have had a lot less new construction. So the current inventory is older. So as soon as you do anything new, people jump on it because it's, because it's new and fresh and there's very few of it in town. And mm -hmm. is, your, is your plan to keep investing in, uh, in Drummondville or are you looking at other markets as well? Uh, keep, for, for now, keep in, uh, investing in, uh, in, in Drummondville or, or wherever I could uh, you know, find, a, find a deal. And so or at the beginning, you described your portfolio at, at now five, five properties, so five single family homes. Um, and you've did, done that since 2017, is that right? Well, tw 2020. 2020 that's when that's when i initially started yeah so the, yeah so 2017 is the first one i've done with uh with uh, my family and then now from 2020 onward that's that's when i started okay so you've bought four properties over the last year year and a half you're doing something properly and and i'd, I'd love to go a little bit into that in terms of you know the mindset and, and your yeah. team like how have you been able to actually go and buy that many properties in that short amount of time it's all mindset and one thing i kept uh, in my mind uh, which i actually have to thank my father for it because uh, when he started uh, he you know he, he said a quote that's always sticking with me it says he always said like oh no no guts no glory and it's funny because i'm actually going to get that tattooed <laughs> on me um <laughs> It's it, it, it's it's the mindset, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, I I didn't I didn't I needed assets. I got scared. I got hurt, mm -hmm. and um, you know I wanted to take advantage. I knew what the banks were doing. They lowered their interest rates, uh, and it was a good time. It's uh, money's cheap right now to to to, to borrow, yeah. and of course um, OPM, uh, you know, le leveraging too. So uh, yeah, it was it was all about the the mindset, and it all started because during my growth stage up to now, I was always the type where I, I read a lot of books and everything. And and one thing that really pushed me was when I read Millionaire Success Habits by Dean Graziosi, who happens to be an American entrepreneur and real estate investor. And in his book, he has something called Seven Levels Deep, uh, and I'm not sure if you ever heard of that. that but I've heard about the book and I haven't read it, but I think I'm going to put it on my list. Oh, you, you should with yeah. my book as well. <laughs> That's my, right. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Cause you, you've also written a book and maybe we can talk about that uh, at the end. So you can tell us a little bit more about it for sure. No problem. Uh, so uh, in his book, it's called seven levels deep. So essentially it's, it's, it's finding out what's, what's your true, why what's, what's the thing that drives you, you know, you, you get up in the morning. What's, what's that reason for, for, for doing what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, it was always, oh, I want to be successful. I want to be successful. Well, wh why, do I, why do I want, want to be successful? So after doing this exercise, you know, at the end, it's like, oh my God, holy crap. Uh, you're essentially, you're asking yourself a question, seven questions. You ask yourself a question and you ask, well, why do you want that? Why do you want to do this? Why, why, why? Until you get to level seven or question seven. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, for, for me, I realized that my why is literally <clears throat> my two boys uh, because what's important for me is generational wealth. It never happened in the history of my families. So it's, it's you know, for me to be the first is, is so motivating for me, inspiring for me. And uh, yeah, so when I found that out it's like oh my god my, my boys you know I, I want to do everything for my boys to give my boys you know a life uh, i never had or opportunities you know so they could do things and uh and no all jokes aside my boys names are literally tattooed on me so at times where i feel down or i'm not motivated or burnout which is funny because when you're when you're burned out it's i've, I've read in a, another book that uh, it's not because you're tired or anything or too much work. It's because you lost your passion. You forgot your why. 
So that's why I put my boys' names on uh, on my arms, and they're always they're always there. They help me. Yeah. So it was reminder. because of that, and I said, you know what? Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's that's what I want to do. I said, no guts, no glory, and I and I want to do this because the worst thing that could happen, I fail, and if I fail, I'm going to learn, and I'll go do something else, but not this time more intelligently. Mm-hmm. It's funny you say that. It makes me think of with with my wife this weekend. We're talking about about the business and stuff. And I just thought, you know, in life, you either have successes or really good lessons because what we sometimes perceive as, as a failure isn't really a failure. Hopefully you learned. And if you learned, well, you've got a good lesson. Yeah. And so it's either a success or a good lesson. Yeah. Um, and so going back yeah. to, to, to the, uh, the, the seven levels deep, um, that's, it seems like it's a book that had a big impact on you on your mindset and motivating you. Oh yes, big time, big time. And and then I just want to add there's there's one quote from Steve Jobs that uh really hit me too because you know when you sit when you take a minute and you realize that it 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 can have a huge impact on you and the quote uh, is uh, everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no, no smarter than you. You know, so that really hit me because you know I I saw successful people around me where I said well, they, they became so successful and they had a lot of less, like less resources than me. Uh, and I, I, I don't want to say like, I'm, I'm smarter than them. You know what I mean? Like they, it, you know, they, they took action. They did it. They yeah. went out there. They, they put in the work. Yeah. Um, so I, I told myself if they could do it. I can do it. Absolutely. And, and, and in your case, like action cures fear. And with what you described, you you were injured. You kind of got scared of what could happen to you or not happen to you, and then you took action mm-hmm. to to counterbalance that. So, so many people that we meet just I feel like they talk about real estate for years. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. They actually never make a single offer. And so, at some point, you just need to get started. Oh, exactly. I hear that all the time, all the time from friends and family. Uh, you know, they want to get started and they want to time the market, which, you know, good luck. Uh, yeah. And it's, oh, you know what? I'll wait till the market goes down. Yeah. And I learned the hard way because I actually had a couple of years ago, um, a couple of years ago, I had a fourplex under contract mm-hmm. that I could have purchased for 295000 Oh, where was I, that? Uh, uh, Valley Field. Okay. Valley Field, yes. And in the midst of COVID, I, I saw it for sale, just went up for sale. I looked at it and the owner who purchased it, which by the way, I backed out due to fear. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was I was scared. I, I, I just couldn't do it. You know, I was scared. Oh, what if I fail? What if it doesn't work out? Yeah. Uh, if, the, if, the, if the market crashes, I get that a lot if the market crashes. Um, I saw it for sale for 500,000 and it actually sold Yeah, and I could have got it under contract. Yeah. And this was two years ago. Yeah. And you could have bought it for 275, 295, 295, 295. Wow. Well, it's just a good example of the, the wealth that can be created in a fairly short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Obviously we all benefit from, from a a lifting market and, you know, rising tide lifts all ships. So that, mm-hmm. that, that really helps. And sometimes we feel like we're so smart and so good. It's like market is just amazing. Uh, but it's also that we take action once again. Exactly. Uh, so just going back to, to the mindset, like, again, you've been able to do quite a few transactions in a short amount of time. Um, I take it that you're not just a multimillionaire with a big bank account. So you've had to partner up with other people. And I was mm-hmm. hoping you could kind of tell us a little bit about how, how do you go about it? How do you structure it? And what, what does the, a basic arrangement look like for you right now? Well, uh, dating, uh, networking, uh, dating, seeing uh, when you when you have a lot in common with the other person or they're they're alike, like you two are alike uh, and, and you just feel, hey, you know, like we could we could work together. Uh, you know, that, that, that's how I structure it. And then we obviously find out, okay, so are we, are we doing a joint venture? Are we, uh, are we going, you know, 50, 50, like I put half, you put half, there's different ways that you could structure a deal. Okay. Um, especially, you know, sweat equity. Um, so that, that's how I structure it. And then who's taking care of what? Yeah. Defining roles yeah. and responsibilities accurately at the beginning. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because if you're investing for the long term, it's it's essentially like a marriage. It so you is. Have to set, you have to set the roles before, you know. Like you said, you have to date. You have to you have to make sure this is you know 
you're doing this, 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 and the other person's taking you know, take care of that. No, it's absolutely crucial. And you know, partnerships are great. They they allow to put rocket fuel on your on your growth, but there's a fair amount of homework that needs to be done before to make sure that it's actually sustainable. Yeah. And so just going back to, to some in your cases, like you and correct me if I'm wrong, but you found the deal and then you took care of it and someone else put all of the money? Pretty much. Okay. Pretty much. Or so, so, sometimes a deal could be structured where the deal could be found. I could put a portion of the money mm-hmm. um, or, you know, in, in cases of uh, like, cause actually right now with, with my team, I have a deal that we put in an offer uh, with my sister who happens to be a real estate agent, Chelsea. Yeah. And um, yeah, we could structure the deal. Okay. Three, three ways. So there's three ways. Actually, my father is in that, in, in that deal too. Mm-hmm. So there, there, there's different ways of uh, of doing it. Okay. And you, you mentioned your your team. Can you kind of run us through like what what does it look like? Who's what are the members and what do they do? Uh, of course. So currently, my team right now, which is still uh, growing, uh, you know, trying to find uh, uh, other people, uh, have my sister, who's a real estate agent, and. Uh, you know, it's not only because she's my sister, but I find that, you know, she's part of the networking group. She, she does her, her own, she educates herself with mm-hmm. what's going on with the market and everything. Uh, she's actually an investor herself. And, uh, you know, she, she has a lot of knowledge. We speak a lot too, uh, you know, about what's going on, the deals, this and that. Uh, because I know there's some agents where they'll tell you, Hey, this is a good deal, but you know, they're not even an investor themselves or they won't even purchase the deal that they're showing you, Yeah, you know, they don't know how to run the numbers. So she's good at that. And then next there's, uh, my soon to be a brother-in-law, uh, her fiance, who's, uh, actually just about to become a broker, mortgage broker. So he's, uh, he's part of it. Mm-hmm. And then I have, uh, obviously my partner who happens to be a real estate, real estate agent, uh, as well, but, uh, you know, there, there, there's him mm-hmm. and there's, uh, you know, for now, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I'm trying to find other people that, uh, that are lawyers, real estate investors as well, you know, just to, to grow my team, because my, like I said, my goal is to, you know, jump into the plexus next and then, you know, we'll, we'll see you from there. Yeah. We'll take it from there. And and you said something interesting, like, oh, in, in growing the team for, because you just mentioned, like, you know, the a, a good lawyer, a notary and stuff. Like, I find it always helps to look for these people when you don't actually need them. Mm-hmm. Because the day you do, then you, they're, they're, they're on speed dial and you're not scrambling at the last minute to try to find someone who, who's competent. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we, we've talked a little bit about your team and your portfolio. Um, you know, with what you de- described, you've had a, a, a really good success over the last fairly short term, I'd say like, you, you know, year and a half and so on. And for all the people that are listening that are, that still haven't taken action, what kind of advice would you give uh, them in re- reassuring them or getting them started? Like, you know, what would you say? <laughs> it's funny. I would say like, no guts, no glory, but um <laughs> Uh, listen, if, if, if I, cause you know, I'm, I'm small compared to big time investors, but I'm still in, I'm still in the middle of my journey growing myself. Success and growth takes time. Mm-hmm. So you have to remember that. Uh, the other thing too, is that, uh, there's, there's another quote I love, which is the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. So if you want something in life, just go for it, try and go for it. Because if you, if you don't, the re- regret is a lot worse. But you have to have the courage to walk into that cave, to pass the doorstep and to walk in the dark. So at the end, maybe with a little small flashlight, you can find a, gl- a, a glowing treasure. And it's you, you, you have to it's scary, but action cures fear. You really have to go through it. It, it, exactly exactly and like i said like during covid where there was a lot of fear w- what's going to happen with the economy I, I find that the business grew a lot uh to the point where we just hired a, a new a new guy uh and my real estate portfolio too yeah you know and, and during covid too so you know the the atmosphere wasn't perfect around us no it, it wasn't but for all 
because a lot of people got scared. But for those who took action, it was actually an amazing opportunity and four chains have been built over the last 18 months that didn't exist before. Those mm -hmm. who took action did extremely well. So it's yeah. just another testimony of, you know, as Warren Buffett says, like be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Yes, I love that. I love that. And if I could recommend one thing, yeah. um, educate yourself, you know, read books, listen to podcasts, network, you know, uh, mingle with people that are that have the same goals as you. Yeah. Um, and one thing, too, is uh, hire a mentor, especially that that is doing what you want to do. It's interesting you, you mentioned that because over the last you know year and a half as well, I've I've spent more on, on on coaching and on educating myself. And sometimes I've looked at the price tag being like, ooh, is it going to be worth it? And now I'm like, thank God I did that. Wow, mm -hmm. I've learned so much. And so it's it's really true that when it depends on you, the, 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 the 10x return that you're going to get on that education or coaching dollar um, in order to literally like put rocket fuel on yourself, on your mindset and on on, on the belief that you have, and I know it's something that, that, that you and I share, the, the strong belief that we can almost do anything if we put our minds to it. We just oh, yeah. need to, as you said, educate ourselves, surround ourselves properly, and then, yeah, do the work. Exactly. The number one thing is you, you have to believe you can do it. Yeah. All right. Um, we're, we're wrapping up here. Uh, you had mentioned that you you wrote a book. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, yes. I'm actually really into health and fitness, um, especially, uh, you know, the, not so much like dieting per se, like one single diet, but just healthy eating, healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I took the leap of faith. I just said, hey, I'm going to try reading a book to educate other people because I've uh, I started doing intermittent fasting before it became a trend. Okay. Um, so I wrote the book. It's called The Fast and Easy Guide to Intermittent Fasting, which is on sale on uh, on eBay. Uh, not eBay, uh, Amazon, sorry. Uh, on Amazon. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much the different types of intermittent fasting that you could do, uh, which, you know, I believe it's essential for, for your health, mm -hmm. uh, especially the, now that there's coming up with hundreds of studies saying that it, this this is a... Uh, you know, if you, if you do this, it could potentially prolong your life, uh, you know, help, help you if you have uh, diabetes or certain, you know, types of uh, uh, diseases possibly. And uh, yeah, I took, uh, like I said, I, I just went for it. I did it. And, uh, and so I just, you know. So, so now you're a published author on, on Amazon. On Amazon, yeah. On Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's funny because I'm, uh, and it's part of which, by the way, I, ha I do have a vision board, which I'm, I'm, I'm putting something else on my vision board is I want to write another book, but this time on mindset, because if I could help someone who's in possibly my position a couple of years ago, who's, you know, doesn't know what to do, is, is lost, wants to get out of, you know, in, uh, in years down the line, the rat race, doesn't want to, you know, retire at 65, like we're, we're told that we're supposed to retire. Um, you know, if I could help one, even one person, you know, that's, that's, that's good for me. And it's, it makes it all worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, man, you have uh, such a, you, you've done a lot of things where you, you and I are very close in age. Um, but you, you, you've done a lot in terms of, you know, your, your work and your progression, your real estate investing, and, uh, some of the other passions that, that, that you have in your life. And, uh, I really well, I know it will be an inspiration to other people because like, like, like you said, like I've listened to a lot of other podcasts and I've learned so much from listening to other people's story and successes and use that as a motivator to just think if he can do it, I can do it too. Yeah. You got that. You got that right. <laughs> yeah. Um, lastly, where can people find out more about you? um on my instagram uh well we, there's two instagrams i mean there's the company instagram which is andres Mirko, because uh you know like i said we're pretty much the only company in quebec that services where well, i specialize in that brand which this oven is in every restaurant you could think of uh and then you know lastly uh my my instagram uh, ricky.canas so you know or you could type in my name ricardo canas and uh you'll find me Perfect. I'll put it in the notes for the episode. 
Perfect. Hey, Ricardo, thank you so much. I'm really glad you participated today. It's been, uh, it, it's been fun and a good inspiration uh, to, uh, to listen to your story. So I will wish you, continue to wish you great success because I know you, you will because you've, you've, gone, you've gone this far and that's absolutely uh, key. And um, I look forward to seeing you soon. And I was going to say, why not uh, in like, let's say a year or year two from now, or maybe I shouldn't give a timeline, but let's do another one because I'm really, really curious to see how your, your portfolio is going to grow and how you're going to go about it. So I'd love to, uh, to do a follow up episode in the future. Oh, no problem. Looking forward to it. And, and thank you. Thank you for having me on. Uh, it's a pleasure, man. Your, your story is inspiring. So that's the goal of this podcast is to inspire everyone, whether you're just looking to start investing in real estate or looking to grow your portfolio. Uh, there's so many good stories here in Quebec and my objective is to share them. So on this great note, thank you very much. And I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.